Before we get into actually using Laplace transforms in order to solve differential equations, we're going to take a review of partial fractions and how they can relate to inverse Laplace transform. The question is going to be how do partial fractions help find inverse Laplace transforms. Because the reality is, as we do Laplace transforms, we're going to end up with a lot of situations where we need to use partial fractions. So let's do a quick review of partial fractions. And then we will actually go into solving some inverse Laplace transforms using these partial fractions. The idea of partial fractions, and this is summarizing an hour-long video into one video, one small example, um, but we've got some function in the numerator, and the denominator can be factored maybe to x plus m times x plus n squared times maybe an x squared plus px plus q or something. And we're going to break this up into a partial fraction because each part is easier to take the integral of, or in our case, will be easier to take the inverse Laplace transform of. So what we'll do is we'll break this up. Each factor gets its own numerator. So we'll put the letter A over any normal linear denominator, A over x plus m, for example. But if we have a squared factor, we need to account for each power of that factor. So you would see a b over x plus n plus c over x plus n squared. So when you have a squared linear factor, you have to account for each power of that. And then if you've got an irreducible quadratic, we're going to need to account for descending powers of x, and so we would have a constant times x plus another constant. We'd have a binomial in the numerator over the trinomial denominator. So that's just a quick review of how we set it up, and then what we do is we solve for a, b, c, d, and e, or whatever variables we have, by multiplying by the least common denominator to solve. And you'll end up with a big algebraic system of equations. And you can solve it really in one of three ways. The nicest way is if we can pick values for x to eliminate factors. Ideally, we'd pick a value for x that would eliminate everything except for one term. So we're not actually eliminating factors, we're eliminating terms. That would be a better phrase. Or sometimes we can't do it exactly and purely so that each term can be solved individually. So we'll have to solve multiple terms simultaneously. We can pick values for x to create a system of equations. Or the third option that we'll sometimes do as well is we can just multiply out the big expression that we end up with and then we can set equal the coefficients of each term, the x, the x squared, the x cubed, etc. So if we've got a 5x on one side and a 10x on the other side, we can set 5, 5 and 10. Our multiplier must be 2. Okay, that's the one hour partial fractions video squeezed into about two minutes. Now that we've done that quick review, though, let's actually find some inverse Laplace transforms.
using partial fractions. It's not uncommon to try and find the inverse Laplace transform of an expression like x squared plus 1 over s cubed minus 2s squared minus 8s. And if you look at your table, there's really nothing to do with an inverse Laplace transform that is in this form. So instead, what we're going to want to do is we're going to do partial fractions to split it up into a sum because we know we can split the Laplace transform up by the individual terms. So the denominator, they all have an s in them. So I can factor out an s, leaving behind s squared minus 2s minus 8. And then that's going to factor to s minus 4, s plus 2. So our setup is going to be s squared plus 1 over s times s minus 4 times s plus 2 is equal to some constant over s plus some constant over s minus 4 plus some constant over s plus 2. Multiplying by the least common denominator of s times s minus 4 times s plus 2, we're going to end up with s squared plus 1 equals a times s minus 4 times s plus 2 plus b times s times s plus 2 plus c times s times s minus 4. And this is going to be one of the cases where we can pick really nice values for our variable, in this case s, to make factors disappear. If s is equal to 0, s squared plus 1 becomes 1. And then our first term is going to be negative 4 times 2, negative 8a. And notice all three of the other terms will go to 0. So I can tell that a is equal to negative 1 eighth. If I let s equal to 4, Then s squared plus 1 would become 16 plus 1, which is 17. And the first and last term would go to 0. So I'm just left with b t times 4 times 6, which is 24b. So b must equal 17 over 24. And finally, if I let s equal negative 2, you can see the first and second terms would go to 0. So we're left with negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 equals 5 equals negative 2 times negative 6 is 12c and so I can see then that c is equal to 5 twelfths. This is nice because now I'm actually finding the inverse Laplace transform of a which is negative 1 eighth and I'm going to, with Laplace transforms, we're going to pull that number out. When we were integrating, we left it in the numerator. But with Laplace transforms, pull it out. a times 1 over s plus b, which is 17 over 24, times 1 over s minus 4, plus c, which is 5 over 12, times 1 over s plus 2. And what's nice is we know all these constants come out front. So we now have negative 1 eighth times the Laplace transform, inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s, plus 17 over 24 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 4, plus 5 over 12 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 2. So let's go to our Laplace transform table and see if we can find these functions. We can see function number one, uh, the one over s is going to reduce to just the one. And we can see function number 10, the one over s minus a constant is going to reduce to e to the a t. So using those properties, we end up with negative 1 eighth times 1 plus 17 over 24 times e to the it's the something times t the a is what's subtracted from s so 4 times t plus 5 twelfths times e to the and this time because the denominator has a plus it's going to be a negative 2 t 
and multiplying by 1 doesn't do much for us, so we end up with our expression. That's the result of our inverse Laplace transform. Let's try a few more examples that use these partial fractions to help us find these Laplace transform inverses. Let's try and find the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared minus 6s plus 9. Well, you can already see that that denominator is going to factor to s minus 3 squared. And because we have a squared linear factor, we have to account for each power of that denominator. So we'll have an a over s plus 3, or minus 3, and a b over s minus 3 squared. And so when I multiply by my least common denominator, we'll end up with s equals a times s minus 3 plus b. This equation must be true no matter what s is equal to. So let's pick a convenient value for s of 3. That's going to make the first term go to 0. And we get 3 is equal to b. For the second term, we can never get it to go to 0. So we're going to have to treat it like a systems of equations. Fortunately, we already know what b is equal to. So we can just pick another convenient value for s. 0 is always really easy to do math with. So if we make s equal to 0, we get 0 equals negative 3a plus b, or 0 equals negative 3a plus 3, which means a must equal 1. So what we're actually finding the inverse Laplace transform of is going to be a 1 over s minus 3 plus b 3 times 1 over our s minus 3 squared. Again, we can distribute the Laplace transform through. So we have the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 plus 3 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 squared. Let's go to our Laplace transform table and see if we can find these equations. It looks like equations 10 and 11 are going to be the most helpful for us here. Equation 10 has got the s minus a. In our case, it's going to be an s minus 3. And equation 11 has the s minus 3, or a, squared. So we know we can use those equations then to get the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 is then e to the 3t plus 3 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 squared is t e to the 3t. Let's try one last example before we wrap up. Let's try and find the inverse Laplace transform of s squared minus 2s all over s to the fourth plus 7s squared plus 12. Well, as we factor our denominator, that's going to be s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 3. So we end up with s squared minus 2s over our denominator of s squared plus 4 times s squared plus 3. Since those are each irreducible quadratics, we have to account for one degree less in the numerator. We're going to do an as plus b over the s squared plus 4. Plus, we have a cs plus d over the s squared plus 3. Again, when we multiply by our least common denominator, we end up with s squared minus 2s equals as plus b times s squared plus 3 plus cs plus d times s squared plus 4. And this time we're not going to be able to do any substitutions for s that are going to make things go away and go to 0. The best we could do is say s equals 0 and that'll leave us with b and d. 
but uh, that's really the best we could do. And so since nothing's going to disappear nicely here, let's just multiply this out and we'll set coefficients equal to each other and see what we end up with. So we have s squared minus 2s equals, multiplying out, we have as cubed plus bs squared plus 3as plus 3b plus uh, cs cubed plus ds squared plus 4s 4cs plus 4d and then we're going to organize our coefficients together and as i organize them i'm also going to group functions that have or equations that have similar variables. For example, we've got cubes and 0 s cubed on the right. So all of the cubes should have the same coefficient. So 0 is equal to a s cubed plus c s cubed. On the s squareds, we see we've got a 1 s squared needs to be equal to a b s squared plus a ds squared. Since those are different variables, I'm going to write this off to the side. 1s squared is equal to a bs squared plus a ds squared. On the linear terms, we see there's negative 2s's. It needs to be equal to 3as's plus 4 cs's. And since those are a's and c's, again, I'm going to group those with the a's and c's. We've got negative 2 is equal to 3a plus 4c. And then on the constants, we've got 0 for a constant on the left is equal to 3b plus 4d. So 0 is equal to 3b plus 4d, and now we've got a system of two equations and two unknowns twice, and we can solve each of these for our variable. On the first set of equations, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 4. That's going to give me 0 equals negative 4a minus 4c, which adds together to give us negative 2 equals negative a, and so a must equal positive 2. I'm going to put a little highlight mark there to not lose that in my work because I'm going to use that in a minute. For the C, I know that 0 equals A or 2 plus C, so C must equal to negative 2. Let's put a little highlight mark there so I don't lose that. On the other set of equations, I'm going to multiply, looks like, by negative 3 to give me negative 3 equals negative 3B minus 3D. So negative 3 is equal to d. Put a little highlight there, just marking it so I don't lose it in my work. And then going back to that first equation, 1 is equal to b plus d, which is negative 3. So b must be equal to 4. A little highlight to mark that so I don't lose it. So then what we have for our inverse Laplace transform is the inverse Laplace transform of A, which we said was 2s plus B, which is 4, over the s squared plus 4, plus C, which we said was negative 2s plus D, which is negative 3, over the s squared plus 3. And so now we just have to find the inverse Laplace transform of our separated fractions. However, you won't see anything like these equations in our table. So we're going to have to massage them a little bit as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide by the s squared plus 4 on the both parts and divide by the s squared plus 3 on both parts. And I think we saw this in yesterday's video. So we get the Laplace transform of 2s over s squared plus 4 plus 4 over s squared plus 4 
plus a negative 2s over s squared plus 3 plus a negative 3 over s squared plus 3. We still have a little bit of massaging to do in order to use the table. One thing you'll remember is when we saw s squared plus, we wanted to see that number written as a perfect square. And so I'm going to replace the 4s with 2 squared and the 3 with the square root of 3 squared. Also, we remember we like to see if there was an s in the numerator, just an s in the numerator. So I'm going to pull those 2s out in front. But if there was a number in the numerator, we wanted it to match the denominator, which in this case, we want the 4 in the second term to be a 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 2 and multiply by 2 so that the 4 over 2 is going to reduce to a 2. With the negative 3, I'm going to just pull that negative 3 out front, and I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3, and I'm going to divide by the square root of 3 to make it work out. So what we're actually taking is the inverse Laplace transform of 2 times s over s squared plus 4 plus 2 times 2 over s squared plus 4 minus 2 times s over s squared plus 3. And then we have minus 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over s squared plus the square root of 3 squared. Now a brief aside, 3 root 3 actually rationalizes really nicely. If we multiply by root 3, we get 3 root 3 over 3, and the 3's divide out. So it's actually just the square root of 3. So as we spread this out, we now have 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 4 plus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s squared plus 4 minus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of the s over s squared plus 3 minus, and this coefficient reduced we said to the square root of 3, times the inverse Laplace transform of the square root of 3 over s squared plus the square root of 3. which means now we're ready to go to our table and find each of these formulas. In the table, we notice that sine has k in the numerator and cosine has s in the numerator. So using equations 6 and 7, what we end up with for our final answer is 2 times the cosine of 2t plus 2 times the sine of 2t minus 2 times the cosine of the square root of 3t minus the square root of 3 times the sine of the square root of 3t. And you might notice the form of this should look very familiar. It looks very similar to the form of the equations of that we solved that were second order differential equations with constant coefficients that were non-homogeneous. You see that there is the pair of complementary solutions at the cosine and sine of 2t, and there's the pair of particular solutions at the cosine and sine of root 3 of t. We've also found the coefficients a and b, and we've also found the coefficients of an initial condition of c1 and c2. The Laplace transform has done all of that work for us but we're going to see how that works in our next video. For now, it's time for you to practice using these partial fractions to split up the inverse Laplace transform and then actually finding those inverse Laplace transforms. Go ahead and practice that now, and we'll see you in the next video.